Ron Whiteside had a 34 Ford that he had owned since I think it was 15 years old. He had started building that car at another shop, but again, while I was at Boyd's, he came to Boyd's to have us finish the car. I did some design work. We were actually working on the car at Boyd's. Boyd's went bankrupt and out of business, and that's when Ron asked me to finish the car. So Ron's car took a total of six years as well, just like the Grandmaster. But uh, you know, Ron was an amazing customer, and it was kind of the same way as Wes, you really wanted to do the best. Ron never complained once about the time, about the price. He just wanted the coolest car he could get. And that, that car has been with him since he was 15 years old. He used to drag race it. It has a great history. And we built a car and went, and went to the Riddler. And thankfully, we were successful. We, we got the award for him, and he was happy. How I chose the color for the Stallion was I wanted something in that burnt orange family. Shockwave that we built in 1999, that color was so overpowering that you didn't look at the car. So I really richened it up, made it much darker. The highlight was that beautiful coppery orange, it's just stunning bright color. But the cast was a real deep burnt orange, just really, really rich. And that's what I wanted, something that was very elegant and didn't smack you in the face and, and scream out, look at my color. It was look at the whole car. And by getting rid of the sheet metal reveal and just doing a chrome molding on the side, I think the car just became this truly elegant piece of artwork. Jim Griffin, who was doing the interior, he did all of the Riddler cars, but he was working on that car and it was down to the last minute. The truck was in the street waiting to load it so we can get back to Detroit, but Jim wasn't finished. He had been up, I think, for three days straight and he had finished sewing the seat and it was the last piece that he had to sew, but he still had to wrap it. But he fell asleep and he slowly fell asleep and leaned forward until his head went onto his light bulb and the light bulb was so hot that it stunned him and he woke up. And I remember looking over just as he was touching that and oh, <laughs> he got up and finished wrapping that seat. Then we loaded the car and took it back there. And it's the people that you build with that are, that are the fond memories. My favorite piece of that car would be the overall design which is this wedge section that came through the whole car. The whole car is cut and, and wedged down. It's also the wheels have been pushed forward, so it's got a longer wheelbase. It's just, it's not as boxy looking as a stock one. It's chopped, it's, it's just slightly moved around. And I prefer subtle design changes. I wanna do things that I feel would have been really nice if the factory had done it. And when you finish building a car, if you're doing things that just enhance the look at the car, rather than looking at a car and say, wow, they really put some big fender flares on that. I don't want to smack people in the face with changes. I want people to enjoy and look at a car and just try and figure out what did they do to make it so much prettier. There were always hot rods and there were customs. And I really tried to bring the custom element into hot rodding, where basic 32s and 34s, you know, we were actually doing the same type of treatments that we were doing to customs. And I think Ron Whiteside Stallion is the car that truly shows that example of customizing and modifying and laying back the grill and, and truly doing things that uh, were trendsetting. setting.